friends uh, this is dr kabir sadana from delhi and i'm going to talk about an approach to your examinations and of course how to practice dermatology and how to learn that particular art of dermatology and i am a director professor of dermatology at rml hospital delhi and i've worked in various institutions taken exams across universities including national board uh now this talk of course is primarily directed against the question that is often asked by pg students that how should we study dermatology now the degree that we have uh, still is this dermatology venerology and leprology i know a lot of us would like it to be this <laughs> dermatology cosmetology and lasers but believe me there is no great skill in world uh, in being a cosmetologist uh, i would request you all not to denigrate yourself and call yourself a cosmetologist because it doesn't require it doesn't require any degree actually nothing great to it nevertheless now dermatology leprosy std so i'll come with std first now in std you know in my time there was this book called king and nicole it was one of the beautiful books of std where it had a very elegant clinical description and it still is and in my time we used to combine king and nicole with of course homes now homes is a real thick fat book okay difficult to digest difficult to master also and uh, uh what what i would advise you to do in today's times is something very simple that you pick up a list of your short long cases and probably study it from homes maybe get a photocopy of that particular part and read the clinical features from king and nicole of course this was this is one way of going about it there is definitely another way which i'll tell you in a minute uh right so that's about std then you come to leprosy in my time hasting was still a great book um uh, it's still to lazy great book it's one of the finest books for leprosy written a uh, minus of course the fact that it's not been updated and of course jopling was a very small handbook at that time there are some other books uh, which are really good if you are somebody into leprosy there's a book uh, by cochrane a beautiful book uh, which gives excellent clinical features of course not available in most libraries then there are books by brexen which again is very small handy book and uh, then of course we come to dermatology so this is the you know amalgamation of three branches dermatology leprosy and std that make your degree in fact very few branches in medical fields have got three different entities in a degree in dermatology of course you have so many books you have got bulognia you got fitzpatrick rooks andrews and bron falco some of you read that out of these books you know remember one fundamental rule pick up one book pick up one simple book and do not go and buy multiple books because i can assure you we can't finish these books in 3 years uh, i would personally advise you to look at bulognia for exams for your degree and andrews for an opd very good book for seeing opd cases uh, brown falco is one of my favorites but uh, most people don't read in the country leprosy i still would recommend jopling uh, the edition has been updated now we have the 7th edition coming up and it is one of the most uh, updated books very handy of course you can buy even big fat books if you want but i don't think it's required in scds most of us do this combine uh, homes the long short cases and see the guideline the guidelines came out just last year and they're sufficiently good i would suggest even acting in a call to it and also add syndromic approaches from the naco guidelines and that would suffice now of course there is a lot more to dermatology than just this uh there is drugs there is pathology and there is instruments now in in drugs of course uh, you know everybody has a favorite books i uh, feel that a lot of us read volverton volverton you know is a book written by uh, uh, clinical pharmacologists actually and i've seen volverton through the years uh, somehow i find it very difficult to read and assimilate and understand uh, you can read volverton nothing wrong in that uh, we to put a book on drugs a very different format uh, uh, with boxes telling you uses macrograms actions diagrams and indications and monitoring protocols uh, so it's your call um, i think drug book is mandatory not just for exam but also for practice in histopathology in my time we only had livers and it was a decent small book but now of course we have multiple books weedens is was written what's read by most pathologists and most of the pathologists read weedens for the reporting uh then you have mecky and you got the anthony dewyer's book now the anthony dewyer book the last one is actually an amazing book because it gives amazing clinical features 
beautiful diagrams, uh, photographs, and of course, pathology. But for most of us who do not read, uh, you know, these big fat books, I would recommend Mackey uh, uh, over uh, Levers. But of course, I, I know that, you know, most of us would not read so many books. It's your call. Uh, but if you if you ask me for my choice, uh, Mackey is definitely a very good book to read. Then, of course, uh, what else should you read? There are, there are actually, nowadays, books on every single topic. But some books that you could read, one is Nail Disorders by Sher and Daniel. It's a beautiful book, short, concise, well-written, nice font, good, good photographs, and a very good therapeutic intervention is given. You must pick up one of these two books. If both, nothing like it, they are some of the finest books on emergencies which you will face in your MD training, in your first year, second year postings. They're class books. I mean, I know they're books written by people from even our country, but these two books are extraordinarily good. Uh, I would suggest pick up one book for bullet disorders. I personally believe this uh, Marcel Jonkman's book is a beautiful book, though he has passed away. He passed away with cancer uh, a couple of years back. But even then, this book is beautiful and it still stands its stead. I would strongly recommend that for reading uh, CTD disorders, you pick up a book of rheumatology. You know, it's your call what you want to pick up. This is one of my favorite books by Hochberg. It gives stuff which is beyond what's there in textbooks, concise, beautiful flow charts, and up to date. And mind you, these guys are the guys who have been practicing this particular field for ages. So there's no harm looking into what they do. And of course, pick up a hair group, a hair group, a hair group a book. Uh, this is what I would recommend by Ralph True. But there are many books now, multiple books are there on hair, but this still is a very decent book to read. Then, of course, uh, some of us, you know, have a lot of time to read even more books. So, well, if you have time, uh, yeah, there are many more books. Uh, you, can you can have books on various topics out of this list. Some of the books that you probably could uh, look at is probably the book uh, uh, by Hurwitz on pediatric dermatology. It's a, a new edition has come out. It's pretty good. And uh, another book that I would recommend you to read in this list, of course, if you're interested uh, in that field is fascias, gonad dermatitis, or even the pigmentary system. It's beautiful. It's one of the masterpieces books on the topic. And the rest, of course, it's, 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 it's your interest level. Okay, so there are many books on topics. There are even more books, uh, you know, uh, of various types. So that depends on your interest level. Okay, and how much time you've got for medical dermatology. And then there's more, uh, you know, scopy. There's a book on pacoscopy. There's a book on dermoscopy. There's a book on dermatophytosis of the ID well. It's it's free on the site of the ID well, um, and of course, so on and so forth. So there's actually a book on every single chapter of the textbook, okay? Uh, usually by Springer. Uh, but I think that, you know, one should, you should know what's there, but it's not necessary to go and read everything. Then come to the, the, the point that probably you all would like to know. What are the examination-based books? Now, there are very few books in this category, and they're varying in focus. And there is a reason for that varying in focus, and I'll tell you why. So there are three types of books in this particular field. The first is books with question and answers. Now, these are useless. I would recommend you never even buy them. You cannot denigrate, you know, an MD degree uh, into a next coaching uh, institute book and a question and answer. This is not the way to learn dermatology. This is your branch. It's your future. It's your career. And mind you, your question, that is the exam, the, the person wrote this book, his question is not going to be my question. And his answer will again be not be my answer. Why? Because answers change. So such books are complete waste of money. Uh, I know one big pharma company promotes this kind of book. It's total waste. Then you've got books with multiple authors. So there, is a, there are books with 100 authors and volumes. Now, you know, my point is if you have to buy a book with volumes, two volume book, three volume book, then why not just read textbooks? You know, it doesn't make sense, you know, reading volume books. Then, of course, you have books which have got case scenarios. Now, again, they are pointless. I'll tell you why. Because the case scenario books give you tutored questions that you that you feel the examiner may ask you. And there's a, another drawback in these, in these case scenario books because they miss out one very important point that half the exam is about how you describe the lesion and how you arrive at a rational diagnosis. This can't be taught by case scenario books. Then you've got books written by certain editors who have never taken a single MD exam in their whole career. And they're editing books written by 100 different authors. 
Now, there is a difference between compilation and editing. So this, if you want to read a compilation of books, of, of chapters, I think that's pretty pointless. Uh, one should at least look at the background of the person writing the book. All of us have been examinees, but not very many are examiners. And how many of us have taken exams across universities? Very few. Then there are books written by certain authors who are prolific writers, but have never carried a single thesis in their life. So, you know, one should look at the background of what you buy. Okay. Then, of course, there are books for U.S. boards. Uh, good for U.S. boards, but not for uh, our country. Now, come to the most important part. You know, in examinations, decisions of passing and failing and competences based on your spotters. And spotters, you know, are a short uh, summary, five, ten minutes for one case. And it's got three steps. The first step is examination and proper history. This is something which you will learn in your career. I would suggest you learn it from your teachers, from your institutes. Don't pick up books to learn what to speak in the exam about history examination. Step two is a rational diagnosis or DDs. Again, something that you should learn in your institutes. So I've seen cases and present to your, to your faculty. And the last, of course, is the VIVA. Now, the VIVA can have various dimensions, you know, diagnosis, prognosis, severity, etc., etc. And I think this should be the focus of exam-based books. Now, uh, you know, there's a famous saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Our focus uh, of the compendium was to make you a fisherman who could, you know, you know, fish your meal instead of giving you, you know, spoon feeding. Spoon feeding is okay till class 12th. Tragically, even now we have spoon feeding in MBBS and then more spoon feeding by coaching students. But this is your career and I would request you to learn dermatology on your own. These books the compendium series and now the third edition is going to be out very soon. Our aim was to lay out the best concise knowledge on a topic in a single book. Source from the best books in the field. Uh, the books that I've named uh, in my presentation have all been cited in our book and many more. And I would request you to read and assimilate the knowledge and then answer questions in the exam or even in practice. We don't believe in force reading and that's not our aim. And the last and the most important thing, of course, is this book is meant for both theory and practicals. So uh, with that, of course, I close my uh, talk today. And I thank you all for uh, this talk, for listening to this talk. And I hope it helps you in your life, in your career, and of course, in your exam.